Sometimes we want something to only happen once. This is where single cycle effects come in. If we look in our effects editor, say we look in a new effect, E15, over here in our duration, we actually have a couple choices. Infinite, which is what keeps these effects looping forever until we tell them to stop. A specific duration, which is a time, let's say 60 seconds or 30 seconds or 20 seconds, and the number of cycles. So how many go-arounds do we want this effect to have before it stops? There's a little bit of confusion out there about single cycle effects, so I wanted to address them now. Let's go ahead and make a ramp effect, or rather a burst effect, where it snaps on and then fades off. So I'm going to make my timing of zero, dwell of one, and then a time of one, dwell of zero. So if we apply this to our proscenium, it's going to look like this. Right? So it bursts on and fades off, bursts on and fades off. So we have this, you know, a burst effect. Let's say we just want this to do one sweep. We want it to burst on, and then that's it. It does one sweep, and that's, that's it. That's the end of the effect. So let's go ahead and let's set this up to do that. So in our effect editor, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change our number of cycles to one. And when I do that, notice it kind of snaps off, right? I'll run it again so we can take a better look at it. It kind of snaps on in a weird spot and then it snaps off. We really want it to sweep on and sweep off. That's not exactly what we were looking for. Well, there are a couple settings over here on the right hand side that we need to make sure we change to ensure a smooth transition in and out of this effect. Under entry, Notice currently it's set to immediate, which means as soon as this effect runs, it's going to evenly distribute the trail and the grouping amongst these lights and then start running as it would per those parameters. By choosing cascade, it's going to allow the effect to sweep on from the first channel in the selection to the last channel in the selection. So we already saw when I changed that, it sweeps on like we would expect. But as soon as all of those channels are occupied with the effect, as soon as they've all run through the effect, it just instantly turns off. And we actually want this to be a sweep from one side to the other. So we need to change our exit from immediate to cascade. And now we can see that it cascades on and then cascades off. So now when we apply that effect, it's going to cascade on and cascade off. And now we want to put that on a button. Let's go ahead and record that on a sub. Um, we want to record this. Let's record only sub 101. And I'm going to put that over here. So now we've recorded that into a sub. One more thing I need to do to make this effect run properly is I actually need to turn all of the cells off. This isn't a lesson on multi-cell, but by default, all the sub fixtures, all the cells in a multi-cell fixture default to on. Um, which, what's going to happen if we run that, is it looks like nothing happens because all these fixtures are already at full. So we need to make sure they're at zero so this effect runs like we expect. So I'm going to take those pixels and I'm going to turn them off. So now we have the master channels on, but all the cells are off. And I'm just going to dump this in a queue. Record only queue 101 slash 1. So now we have all this data playing back out of a queue. So now if I go ahead and I run this effect, it's going to run the entire effect on and off. And we currently have this set to hold. So if I want to run it again, I have to turn it off, turn it back on, turn it off, turn it back on. So if I want this to be more of a single push button sort of thing, there's, I can change that in the sub properties. Right? So right now it's set to hold, which means the button is going to stay on or the sub is going to be activated until I deactivate it. Which would mean if this was running a looping effect, that effect would just keep running and running and running and running until I deactivated it. But because it's only a one-off effect, it is running and then it essentially stops and we just have the sub latched on. So if I look at my effect, I can see that the cycle time is two seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make my total sub on time to be four seconds. It's going to take two seconds to sweep on and then the same two seconds to sweep off. So I'm going to sub 101, set my properties to 4 instead of hold, and now I push the button, the lights sweep on, they sweep off, and the sub turns off. So now I just have this sweep on a button.
Let's take a look at one more uh, type of one-off effect that we might want to do. Uh, let's say we have some characters on stage and there's an electrical storm and the stage flickers and then blacks out. So we don't need it to flicker, flicker, flicker forever. We need it to do a pretty good flicker once and then we just need it to dump to black. That's another great use for a one-off effect. And when I think of uh, quick and easy flicker effects, I automatically think linear effect. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new effect, effect 816, and create a linear effect. I'm going to go into my random effect form. And let's pick another one. That's actually pretty close to what I'm going to want it to do. So this is a pretty great start. So now, if I apply this, and I, we want everything to flicker on and off together, so I'm going to go ahead and give it a grouping of one so the whole room kind of dims together. Uh, and let's apply that to some of our fixtures here. Let's take just about everything. Set it to 50%. And we're going to run our flicker effect on it. And we can see we've kind of got that good pulse. I'm going to change this, going to increase the scale a little bit. So now we've got all this great stuff flickering together, right? It's a good electrical storm. We can speed it up if we want. So now we want you to flicker, 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 and turn off. So first thing we need to do is we want to edit our graph to make sure that the last part of this effect is off. So I'm going to come in here into edit. I'm going to select these points. And I'm going to move them down vertically. So now we are all the way down here at the bottom. And we can see that in the loop, eventually we can see where that happens because all the lights turn off. So let's go ahead and let's make this a one cycle effect. And it's going to go through and then they're going to, it's going to flicker, but then it's going to fade back to whatever our background values are, right? So it's flickered, 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 and then it returns to 50% in this case because that's what our background value is. And that's because our exit is set to fade by size, which means it's going to fade out, in this case by scale really, uh, and it's going to fade out to what? to our background value. What we want to do is we actually want this to stop and hold, which is going to have it hold at that final value. So now, as it gets to the end, it's going to stay in that blackout. So let's take a look at that one more time. And it's like that. I'm going to run it one more time. Flicker, 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 flicker. And blackout. Now we, of course, can play with cycle time and stuff like that if we want it faster or slower. If we want to put a couple more peaks and valleys in there, we can go in there and edit the waveform. Now that we have this flicker effect that we would like, I'd like to record it into my scene. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of these fixtures, bring in a value, in this case let's say 50%. Uh, I'm going to record this into record only Q2. We are sitting in Q2. And then I want to take these lights and I want to apply the flicker effect. Select last, flicker, flicker, flicker. And yeah, great, that's exactly what I want. Chord only Q, three, time zero, enter. So now I'm in my scene, the lights are on, and the electricity is pulsing, it's pulsing, it's pulsing, and it's going to go out. If we want to manipulate some other stuff about this effect, let's say we wanted the lights to go to full first and then start with the flicker, all I have to do is come in here and select this first point, and I'll just move it to full. Maybe I want it to maybe I want it to hold the full a little bit. So let me take that and we'll move it vertically. So now if we run this effect again, the lights are going to burst to full, and then they'll do their flicker dance, and then they'll burst out. So one-off effects are great for um, busking stuff, but it's also great for transitions in and out or when we need to get from one thing to another uh, with some sort of special effect.